Aloha, my name is Elaine Gallen, and I am the host of Book Books Books. Here's where we are going to read. It's about reading books, writing books, and everything in between. Today, I have shortened my opening because I have a special guest that I'm very excited about, and that is Laura Lenz, author of Story Quest. And we are going to crack the code on writing your memoir. I cannot wait. Aloha, Laura. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Aloha, Elaine. It's such an honor to be here. You know, I love your writing and your talent. So it's super exciting to share a screen with you and a show with you. Thank Thanks. you so much. But I'm going to fell on yours a little bit. Laura is our special guest. She's a respected author, creative coach, editor, although she's not taking any editing right now, and writing teacher. She's been conducting themed writing workshops through her internationally accepted Literati Academy for over 10 years for writers, authors, and business owners. Her most popular workshop is by far Story Quest. It's a 12-week guide that distills the hero's journey by bringing you transformative stories to life on the page. But that's not all that Laura teaches. I have to tell you, I've taken some of her classes and uh, I just couldn't wait to get you on this show. I'm so happy to have you. So Laura, Tell it, we don't have much time and we have a lot to talk about. So tell us about Story Quest, the hero, the writer, and the journey. I'm just going to hold this up. We can. Well, I, I would say that, um, thank you for holding it up. I would say the book was a labor of love. Working with writers for me is definitely a, a labor of love. Um, Christopher Vogler and Joseph Campbell made the hero's journey popular in Hollywood, and they always discussed film and the hero's journey. And so I went and dove into memoir to see how the hero's journey applied to memoir. And um, it does. And I know I'm not allowed to curse on this show, so I'm going to be super careful. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, I'll just say F. Like, if you're f in your life, and then you overcome that, and then you get kicked down again, I mean, that's the hero's journey. And our country is on a hero's journey right now. I mean, it's clear that we're broken. And being broken is part of the hero's journey. And so I uh, took this 12-week uh, class that I taught that was so popular and I turned it into a workbook. So if, you know, it's filled with 62 writing prompts and inspiration from poets and excerpts out of literature, including um, Sharon Olds, Dags Leap, Lydia Yuknovich, The Chronology of Water, um, and so I show you examples of stages of a hero's journey in other memoirs that are best-selling and very intriguing memoirs. And I purposely chose all different styles of memoir, knowing that every writer has a different voice and a different way into their story. So it's very comprehensive. It's like a, it's a 12-week class in a workbook. And it's a lot of work to do it. People get it. And they were like, oh, I thought it was just a couple writing prompts. And I'm like, no, it's a deep dive. It's a deep dive. Can you tell us how that does work? Because, uh, you know, the workbook, uh, I've gone through some of it because I write fiction. I haven't written a memoir yet because there's just not enough wine in my house to get me through one. But um, that's, that's the joke I always give <laughs> anyway. But um, I've looked through it in search of how it can help my fiction writing and mm -hmm. some of the exercises have worked out very well accordingly. So can yeah, you explain I mean, to our viewers how it works? Well, there's 12 stages to the hero's journey. And so um, there, uh, there's always this world before the world that you're showing us in a memoir. And that's the way things were before everything changed. It's kind of essential because we can't understand change unless we know where you were, right? So if you've fallen in love, for example, opening up with that moment of falling in love is okay, but if you leave out what your life was like before, we may not understand the difference. And then there's this call, right? We all have the call to grow and any character in fiction or your character in memoir has a call. And it's a call to change. I tell everyone whether you want to call that call from God or the universe, you know, when it knocks on your door, if you don't answer it, oh, God help you. Because the universe will kick your door down. And if you ignore it, it might burn your house down. And if you ignore it again, something worse might happen. So we're meant to live in our truest selves, all of us, the fiction characters, 
which are all based on us anyway, our character. And um, answering the call is probably the hardest part um, to get through. And then everything goes wrong once you answer the call, right? That's life. It doesn't mean you get an instant reward. It means you have growth and challenges ahead. And that's why I say we're all in it now. We're all in a hero's journey. And America is in a mm -hmm. hero's journey. Very true. We're um, a very broken why, country. Yes. Why should any of us use your workbook? What makes your workbook um, user-friendly to those of us who want to write a memoir? Well, you know, I have this technique that I just found out. I took a master class with Jane Hirschfield, and I just found out she uses the same technique um, where I make lists. I, I do things where I have students make lists. I drop them in before they actually write, and I give them inspiration. So it's my theory that we're writing on the backs of every writer that came before us. You know, we think we're writing alone if we're alone in our room creating, or even if we're in a writing group, when we're writing, we're writing by ourselves, but we're actually writing on the backs of all the influence that has come to us from everything we've read and all the writers that we work beside. And so, you know, uh, this book takes you quickly into where you need to be. And in 13 minutes, you can finish an entire chapter. It doesn't mean it's edited but it means you can have a first draft of each stage of your life through this workbook. So if I were to ask you, what do we stand to gain from this? It's obviously a memoir. Or a memoir a, or a book or a, or a blog or an essay book, or um, you know, a lot of people are creating content for um, even social media. So it helps you create a full story. I always say most of my essays are a whole hero's journey in 750 words. Now, have you used this for businesses as well? I, you know, I used to teach a class um, called Story Marketing, but I, I don't have the time to teach it anymore, but it was wonderful. And I might make a workbook out of it. And it helps people. You know, Apple uh, has their story. Every company has their story. Facebook has his story. And when we understand the story of a company, and then we can align with that story. You see the um, dress companies doing it now, right? They're like, this is made here. These are hand done. Here's the workers. There's a lot of transparency around a lot of business now. And um, we buy based on that transparency. So um, your story of business is a hero's journey. Most business owners story of how they created their business. So yes, I used to teach story marketing. Now, you have other things going on as well. I happen yes. to know that you have a book of essays coming up. November 1st, yes, it's called Freeing the Turkeys, and it has nothing to do with meat eating. <laughs> but um, uh, it's a book that is a compilation of essays I've written over the last five years, but most of them the last two years. Um, and they're essays about the body. I've had cancer twice the body breaking, the body healing. Um, some of them are funny, our ancestors. I even have a whole section about the dead talking to me, which doesn't happen that often, but it happens enough to get a section of stories about. Um, what else? Bodies breaking, grief. There's a lot of grief in it. I had grief young. I think my first big grief event, I was five. And um, so uh, I think those stories, my stories, my essays bring hope. And I have been asked about a thousand times for a compilation and I'm finally answering that call. Okay, have you written a memoir yourself on any of I these have, issues? You know, I'm working on a memoir um, that this title came from, Freeing the Turkeys. And it's a memoir of two years of my life. Um, it was my boyfriend dying. Um, he died when I was 23 and I met him when I was 19 and it's a sweet, funny love story and um, with, filled with grief and snot and crying and with a beautiful happy ending that ends in Italy. One of the things that I like about your writing is, because I'm, I'm intimate with your writing and your writing is intimate. You travel inside the body, inside the heart, inside the soul. And I wonder if you could read us a short essay of something that you've written because 
I, I find your writing exceptional. I, I, you make me think, you make me cry, you make me want to write just like you, and I don't know how. <laughs> you write just like you, and it's amazing. I just want to say that. So I'm sure there are people who would say the same. I want to write just like Elaine. And the great no, thing about writing is that we all have our own voices, and they're all unique and beautiful. But this is a piece that I wrote um, about um, love and hate. So here we go. I walk through Leonardo da Vinci airport like a ripe strawberry, smelling like sex and wine and sweat, running braless through the terminal and entering a small commuter plane filled with Italian businessmen and women annoyed their flight was delayed. This was the time when they held the plane a few minutes longer for anyone. I had just blossomed after a year and a half of being an orchid bud tight on the stem, too tight to bloom from grief but I had thrown a coin over my left shoulder into Trevi Fountain and made a wish, and the concrete gods and winged horses seemed to want my wish to come true. Love came easy in another continent. It was a combination of the place, the man, the timing, the language. A year and a half before, my boyfriend had died suddenly, and I was sure I would never love again. But a coin toss and a man in a small white fiat would take my heart out of the concrete that had been poured over it, and break it open in front of the Spanish steps. We all have love stories, a time in our lives when love seems to turn everything magical. But what happens in life when love is hard? When someone is hard to love? When they knock on your door too early or leave their kids with you for two extra hours or overreact to something you did or didn't do? What if someone has a different viewpoint than you politically or doesn't believe a woman has the right to choose what happens to her body once she becomes pregnant. Maybe they eat a different diet than you, worship a different God than you. Can you love them? Can you love Republicans now? Can you love Biden supporters? Doctors who forgot to fill out the paperwork for a test you need that might save your life? Years ago, I read an essay from a Holocaust historian, John Sachs, who was invited to a Holocaust deniers conference. And he decided to say yes, after years of declining. During the reception, he was surprised to find himself enjoying their company. And he found them to be warm and inviting, even intelligent. Later, when he went to the podium to speak, he looked out at the sea of faces and paused. He had prepared an entire presentation with timelines, photographs, facts. But looking at men and women so like himself, he decided to talk about love instead. He said, when we fall in love, we don't just lo have love for that person. We have not used up all our love. Love is a muscle. When we use it, it expands us and helps us love more until we're in a universe of love. What he said next might surprise you. Hate is also a muscle. Hate was brewing when Hitler came into power. And what I want to say about hate is that it spreads. One word of hate, a simple negative sentence can quickly spread to become a Mount St. Helens of hate. Exercising, exercising the wrong muscle is how we got to the Holocaust. And that's what's happening now in America. By now, I thought it would be over, but the hatred is palpable, even on our Aloha Island, where I find myself yelling at a tourist yesterday who pulled into Hanalei parking lot at 40 miles per hour. <clears throat> This Holocaust historian said, we're all capable of this kind of hatred, every one of us. How did the Holocaust deniers react to his speech? With a standing ovation. His words began to build a bridge for further discussion because love always feels better. It spreads like butter, like a seed in the trade winds. One thing both sides could agree upon, there was a lot of hatred. Yelling in the parking lot from, to a tourist from the mainland who hadn't acclimated to Kauai customs wasn't a mindful or loving response from me. In this time in history, it is so important to choose carefully which muscle you want to strengthen when responding to another person. Because as author Nicholas Spark says, just when you think it can't get any worse, it can. And just when you think it can't get any better, it can. My essay. <laughs> oh, see, I don't write that. That's that's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. It encompasses so much. Um, 
is this is going to be part of the essays in, in your essay book? Yeah, that's one of the essays in my essay book. Um, yeah. You're publishing when? November 1st. I want it out in time for Christmas because my atheist boyfriend died on Christmas morning. And so I, this is my gift, you know, to the world. And um, there was some humor in that, I, I guess. You didn't laugh, but I didn't um, laugh, but I, dying I, I, on I, Christmas I, morning is somewhat funny. It was a good way for him to go out. Yes. Oh, well, condolences on that. But um, you're right. So someone was knocking on your door, right? And then it crashed through and the, all of this happened. So you have to write. You have to write. Okay. Tell us about your Literati Academy. Uh, I think we so, have something on your website about that. Yes, so I teach six week themed classes right now we're on the body we just finished the body and we're starting another course on the body. Um, and um, so basically and then July 9th we're we're doing an online event so if you've never tried my classes doing one of my big online events is great because you get the feeling of the class, you may write with 100 people, but you read back in breakout rooms of eight. So um, womb stories, I mean, and you know, I, these aren't abortion stories, they can be, it can be any womb story you have that's um, calling to you to write. And how timely, how timely this is, oh my god! I know, I had it up a month ago, but we all knew this was happening. Yeah. I mean, it, not only was it leaked, but um, we had to not be following who was going on to the Supreme Court, you know? <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, uh, you had to be asleep not to know what, what was going to happen. But yeah, our, our womb stories matter. We're women and men. I invite men to come write your womb stories too, July 9th, because men lose babies too. Men make these decisions with women and men are fathers. And um, so even though they don't have a womb, they're, they're interacting with wombs. Yes, and, we, and, and I invite the male opinion. I had a grandmother recently tell me about her daughter's abortion. And she said she grieved for months and I had never thought about a grandmother grieving. Yes, yes. And I would think that a father grieves too if he doesn't have a choice in the matter as well. Yes, you know, and all those stories happen. matter. All of them matter and they're hard to write. I've had 10 people sign up and cancel, sign up again and cancel again because it's one of those topics and I did write one and made it public on my Facebook wall so that, and I found it hard also. I'm asking everyone to do something. And then I wrote a story where I had an abortion, then I had a baby, then I had to have a, a DNC for a baby that lost its heart in the fifth month. And so I, I kind of covered it all in one story, but I found it hard also. I thought, oh my God, I'm going to lose so many friends on Facebook and people are going to be very upset, but they weren't upset because people need the truth. We're in a time in history where the truth is all that is going to heal. Yes, I agree with that 100%. And the, and the more we talk about it, the better it is for everyone who's, who is harboring and in pain over it, right? Because yeah. stories heal. You say yourself, stories heal. They right? do. And I had a student in my class. She's very Christian. She's lovely. She wrote about um, the abortion she regretted her whole life. And yes, why? Yes. And when it came to us in a story, I mean, there were gasps from everybody in the room. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. Those are important stories. Yes. To me, a story gets a point across but a sign does not, screaming does not get a point across. A story creates a bridge. I would think too, that for some of these people in your classes, these workshops, which I've attended several of them and I've enjoyed very much, uh, these workshops alone could uh, begin some memoirs for people. Yes, I had a woman write her whole memoir. Well, I've had two women write their entire books, three, I'm sorry, three in my class. One was Debbie Augenthaler, and she's one of the stories I, rec one of the memoirs I recommend people buy to see the hero's journey. It's called You Are Not Alone. And her I've husband died in her arms. Yeah, Debbie's great. Her husband died in her arms when she was 33. 
And I helped her edit that book and it's won numerous awards. And I will say that, you know, um, she wrote it all in my living room. She came to the island for a year and wanted to take the workshops live. Mm. And of course then became the arduous six to eight months of editing but uh, the content was all written. And so you can take my body class and write to any topic, you know, because we, we start with the tongue and the throat the next class. So it's voice, how mm -hmm. you lost your voice, how you found your voice. That's part of a hero's journey, right? Your, your voice. And then we move on to, you know, we write through um, the heart and the sacrum and the liver, which is your teenager. You know, your liver is the one that says, come on, let's go out. We haven't been out in a really long time. You know, how about a Bloody Mary on Sunday? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's your liver. And so all these great stories come out through these very unique uh, methods of, um, of uh, topical writing. So we do the body. I've done quantum physics, which is wonderful for a story because time is bendable. Um, all of our lives have a big bang in them, which some call your Saturn return. But, you know, we, I, we explore all these avenues into stories so that it's easy to find your story. I will tell all viewers that if you do anticipate joining one of Laura's classes, do it at the soonest opportunity because you sell out. You sell out well, and then you have to add days. You have to add more days. More well, what happens, yes. I mean, sometimes I, I, I like to tell people it's more a rumor that you can't get into my classes than a reality. Because if you contact me and say, I really want to be in your class, I'll put you on a wait list. Because if you miss the window, right, um, my current students have the first right to sign up, you know, so I give them a couple weeks and then I open it to the available spots to people who've been waiting. And then it opens to the public. And usually by the time it opens to a public, there are a few spots, but you know. So um, if you let me know, I find a way in for you. And I also have <laughs> wonderful teachers who are, um, Elizabeth Becker and Robin Gadian are teachers and they are amazing. Robin Gadian's an amazing poet. Elizabeth Becker is a chaplain and specializes in grief work. So, you know, they're wonderful facilitators teaching the same you curriculum. Have, you have special guests come in too, like Ellen Bass and, and other oh, people. Oh, Dorian Lux, Ellen Bass, some of them. I just looked at the time and you have a few more things that we want to talk about. Oh, okay. So what's on your horizon? Oh, well, I, I showcase my student work. So I would like to tell you that my student work is some of the best contemporary writing in the world today. And it, I'm not bragging because it's their writing, not my writing, okay? Some of my students will just, um, I, I, you know, the only reason they don't have a book out yet is they don't have enough material yet. So I take some of the best writing from each series and I do spoken word shows that are live on Facebook. And if you follow me on Facebook, it's very easy to find everything that's going on in, in this literary world. So I have, a, um, I have an event July 17th. It's my, my birthday is the 18th and I'm this is my gift to myself to showcase some of my favorite writers. And um, yeah, and Amy Sossenberg. Your, your Facebook page is Laura Lentz, right? L-E-N-T-Z. God, I don't know. Does it any other name? I believe it is. No, uh, it's Laura Lentz, but there's like several Laura Lentzes. Let me just see. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I have it right here. Hold on. I yeah. have it. It says Laura Lentz, editor, writer, teacher. Um, I don't know the URL though. Oh, I had I it. I should know it. Uh, I have a couple. Yeah. Like I have this author page. I never do. You know, but I have because you're actor. Yeah, you have literary. You know, also, yeah, that's another Facebook page. I have Literati Academy, but um, that's my company. And then uh, all this is under the umbrella of Literati Academy. But my personal page is where I, you know, engage with so many beautiful people from all over the world. And my writers are come from all over the world. I have writers in nine countries, um, probably 15 states. Yeah, you know, I found Laura.Lentz.6. That's it, Laura.Lentz.6. And so anyway, my, my events are free. Like uh, my um, 
the spoken word events are 30 minutes. We keep it short. And um, I have writers writing about their bodies breaking, their bodies healing, um, body intuition. And really, um, I have a wonderful, sexy piece coming into this one. I don't shy away from sexual oh, yeah. uh, content or stories in my classes. Um, we, we, we allow all, everything to, that wants to come out to come out. That's the beauty of you. I have to say that's the beauty of you. Now you're also gonna be at the Courtney Writers Conference in November and you're gonna start doing Facebook live author interviews. Yeah, I am with and the authors. Things. Yeah, the authors of my Facebook live interviews are writers um, who put out books on writing. So we okay. talk about writing in them. And the, the first one is gonna be with, my first writing teacher ever was Nancy Arany, probably 30 years ago, maybe longer, 35 years ago. And um, Nancy Arany just published a book about um, grieving and memoir, you know, how grief is a part of memoir. And it's a beautiful book and I'm interviewing her. I'm not sure when, but soon. Okay. And uh, probably in August. And um, yeah, and I will be interviewing writers who are, who write about writing. What would you like to leave the viewers with? About Laura Lentz, about Story Quest, about Literati Academy. I, I would like class. to leave them with a story um, about, about writing. 40 so seconds. It, <laughs> we have 40 seconds. I want to say that every story matters. If you don't think you're a writer, then that's a bad critic inside your head that you need to get out. And I can help you do that. Um, you know, I had a very famous teacher once say to me, driving her to the airport, don't you hate those students? You know, they're never going to be able to write. And it was like a knife in my heart because I don't know those students. They come in and they practice and they become extraordinary writers. So there is no such thing. And that's, that's a literary um, snobbishness. Mary Oliver was shunned by the literary world. Walt Whitman published his own poetry. Don't let anybody tell you anything about not being able to write. You can write and your story matters. That's what I want to leave All right, you. we must go. Aloha. I would love to Aloha. have you back again. There's so much to talk about with you. It's always so exciting. I want to thank everyone at Think Tech Hawaii for supporting the program and all of us. Thank, thank you. The you, technician. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.